Today in Parliament, the Speaker lost his rag with the government, and rightly so. The Chancellor and the Prime Minister, to be fair, have been telling the world's media pretty much everything that's in the budget, way before it's been announced. And which, to be honest, is they're free to do, as long as they've told the House first. It's part of the ministerial code that any policy announcements must be made to the House before anybody else. Now, whether it's them testing the waters to see how people will react to a policy, or just trying to set the news agenda and move away from Taylor Swift tickets and endless question on who is a worker, but they've gone the wrong way about it. Now, I can't respond to every message that I get on the videos, but I do try to read every single one. And one of the most prominent comments is when they first took office is that they're just the Red Tories. I'd like to think not. I'd like to think they're going to be different and they're going to make people's lives better and they're going to change things for good. But doing stuff like this is what you'd expect the Tories to do and what they did. And so do Labour have to be held to a higher standard? Yeah, probably. But it's simple things like this that they should be showing how a government is run properly. There was a saying going around saying that the grown-ups are back in charge. But in the space of a few days or a few weeks, we've had policy announcements made to the media, MPs thumping constituents. And throughout all of this, their PR and their comms team around the freebies has been absolutely awful. So I'm so glad that the Speaker did actually call this out, because they need to get better. In media interviews last week, the Chancellor announced that she intended to introduce changes to the fiscal rules relating to the funding of day-to-day -day spending through tax receipts and to the measurement of the public debt. These are major new policy announcements with significant and wide-ranging implications for the government's fiscal policy and for the public finances. It is evident to me this should therefore have been made in the first instance in this House and not to the world's media. This principle is clearly unambiguously set out in paragraph 9.1 of the Ministerial Code. While this can hardly be described as a leak, the Chancellor herself gave interviews on the record and on camera. The premature disclosure of the contents of the budget has always been regarded as supreme discourtesy to the House. Indeed, I still regard it as such. I am very, very disappointed that the Chancellor expects the House to wait nearly a full week to hear repeat these announcements in the Budget Statement on Wednesday. I have always defended and doubted the right of this House, including the opposition parties, backbenchers in all parts of the House, to be the first to hear major government policy announcements. Ministers should expect to face proper, sustained scrutiny when these announcements are made for the elected members of this House and not for the American news channels. I can assure the government that it is still my firm view and that I will use the powers they have to make sure the House is able to hold ministers to account. I am glad there is a statement later on fiscal rules. Perhaps no coincidence. Honourable members may be wondering how they will get a seat on Wednesday. We will be quite honest, the way it is going, you won't need to. We will have all have heard it first in here. It is not acceptable. I do not want it to continue, and I want to treat this House with the respect it deserves. I am not with this side or that side. It is totally unacceptable to go around the world telling everybody rather than these members. They were elected by the constituents of this country, and they deserve to be treated better, whatever. And is not it funny? When it was the previous part, it was the opposite side that was complaining to me. Get your acts together, all sides. Treat members with respect. Right, let's come to the urgent question. Parliament's not been sitting for very long, considering all the recess and the conference season, so you wouldn't have expected the Speaker to have to get cross about many things. Yet this isn't the first time he's had to get cross with the MPs, and you can see him doing exactly the same sort of thing with Victoria Atkins in the video that's on screen now. Don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.